Stephen Calabresi, who's also a constitutional law professor, something you know very well. Calabresi teaches at Northwestern Law School. He writes today, quote, some Republicans, including me, therefore acquiesced in Joe Biden taking office because we thought we had to do that to preserve a facade of democracy absent concrete proof of voting fraud. But deep down in our guts, we thought that Joe Biden's campaign had probably won with dirty tricks, although that could not be proved in a court of law. He goes further writing that he will always feel that Biden may well have been an illegitimate president. I mean, Congressman, the reason why I wanted to bring that to your attention is this is a lawyer teaching lawyers to be that the 2020 election was stolen. And I feel like it's a symptom of the bigger problem that's going on with the GOP these days. You're totally right. I mean, that was a completely irresponsible statement that Mr. Calabresi made. I was startled and astonished when I saw it because he was somebody who was actually helping to rebut some of the most extreme claims that Donald Trump was making during the impeachment trial. But it looks like, you know, they are uh, circling the wagons around Donald Trump in the wake of his criminal conviction. I mean, I don't know what it is about a unanimous jury verdict based on um, the standard of proof of beyond a reasonable doubt that a law professor has a problem with. And I don't know why Mr. Calabresi can't understand that 60 federal and state courts reviewed every one of Donald Trump's claims of electoral fraud or corruption and repudiated and rejected all of them. So then he says, well, you know, I somehow feel it. I get a, you know, a spider sense in my bones, <laughs> right? Um, it can't be proven in court criminally. It can't be proven in court civilly. And yet, the co-founder of the Federalist Society, in order, I suppose, to try to ingratiate himself with Donald Trump, decides that he's going to say he just feels there was something wrong with it. Um, that's the kind of feeling that is getting us into terrible trouble in the country. It's an attack on the rule of law. And coming from a law professor, it's just baffling to me. Yeah, but that quest to push disinformation and misinformation doesn't happen just in our law schools. It's happening in Congress, and it leaves the heavy lifting to people like you and other Democrats in Congress to stop gap the lies. Is there anything that can be done, though, to stop what happened, for example, this week with Dr. Fauci in Congress? Is there anything to do to make sure that doesn't happen in the halls of Congress? Well, you know, the party of uh, democracy and the party of freedom and the party of truth has just got to be tough. And I think Dr. Fauci modeled that toughness uh, this week when, um, you know, and he's not a partisan actor, but he's just a scientist. And he just said that this is nonsense and this is preposterous. I mean, I had, you know, Republican colleagues and there are right wing commentators who are out there saying that Dr. Fauci created the COVID-19 mm -hmm. um, virus in order to make money off of it. And they were charging him with uh, profiting somehow off of COVID-19. And he refuted that definitively and shut them down. But like I told Dr. Fauci at the hearing, they were treating him like a convicted felon. And then I had to correct myself. I said, no, actually, they treat convicted felons much better than they treat doctors who have devoted their entire lives to say, Saving people's lives. And, you know, if you look at Dr. Fauci's record, not just on COVID-19, but uh, HIV, AIDS, the, the, uh, the Zika virus, a whole bunch of other diseases, he has saved hundreds of thousands of lives through his work as a doctor, a scientist and a medical leader. And yet the, all they could do was beat him up. And then meantime, they're running around the country trying to excuse an adjudicated sexual assailant, an adjudicated fraudster and a convicted felon who was just found guilty by a jury of 12 peers chosen by both sides in the trial of having paid $130,000 in hush money to his porn star mistress and then cooking the books to engage in more financial fraud. And that's the person who's defining their party. Joining me now is Michael Cohen, former personal attorney to Donald Trump, who just appeared as a key witness in the former president's first criminal trial in New York. He's the author of the book's Revenge, How Donald Trump Weaponized the Department of Justice Against His Critics and Disloyal, a memoir. Michael is also the host of the podcast Mea Culpa with Michael Cohen and Political Beatdown. Michael Cohen, good to see you, my friend. Thank you for being with us. It's good to see you. You all. and I have been talking about this particular topic for a long time, and it, appeal, it, 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 it relates to you very, very specifically. It's not a general thing. At one point, you had been in Otisville in, in, in you were in prison there. You were let out during COVID. Right. 
to, to home confinement. Correct. And you were called in, I believe, to a, a, an administrative... I was, uh, I was called into 500 Pearl Street yeah. in order to uh, sign what's called the Federal Location right. Monitoring Agreement Which is, in order to have... Uh, either an ankle monitor or a telephone uh, placed upon. So that's this. Um, it's it's a document. It's it's pro forma. Generally, it's got a bunch of things on it that you would agree to do. Sure. Right. It, it contains a specific federal ID number yes. at the top left corner top of the left document. Corner. But this isn't actually what you you were brought to sign. This is correct. A, do- a separate document which has something that the official document doesn't have. I'm, have. I'm going to read it. It commits you to saying you will have no engagement of any kind with the media, including print, TV, film, books, or any other form of media and news. Prohibition from all social media platforms, no posting on social media, and requirement that you communicate with friends and family to exercise discretion in not posting on your behalf or posting any information about you. The purpose is to avoid glamorizing or bringing publicity to your status as a sentenced inmate serving a custodial term in the community. That's highly specific to you, Michael Cohen. This is not what other other people sign. In fact, the whole document is specific to me. It, yeah. there, um, I don't think that there are any of the same paragraphs in the legitimate one uh, as it relates then yeah. to the counterfeit. And so my refusal to sign the counterfeit document resulted in approximately one hour later after appearing at 500 Pearl Street before uh, two members of the Bureau of Prison, part of the Department of Justice, Adam Pakula and uh, Enid Phoebus, I was then met by three marshals who then provided uh, my lawyer, who was with me, Jeffrey K. Levine, friend of mine, because none of this seemed to make any sense at yeah. all. And I was remanded back to Otisville for another 15 days of solitary So you didn't sign this, and they threw you in jail. You didn't sign a thing that said that you would not communicate. And, and I want to understand, because this was then adjudicated in court. And in the, uh, in, the, in the decision, the judge said, the court finds that respondents, such you, respondents' purpose in transferring, uh, I'm sorry, respondent is... Government. The government. The court finds that the respondent's purpose in transferring Cohen from release on furlough and home confinement back to custody was retaliatory in response to Cohen desiring to exercise his First Amendment rights to publish a book critical of the president and to discuss the book on social media. Accordingly, respondents are hereby enjoined from continuing uh, any continuing or future retaliation against Cohen for exercising his First Amendment rights. So you were vindicated. Well, I was vindicated in the fact that I was released after another 15 days of solitary confinement, making it 51 days in total. That to me is not vindication. That to me was the, you know, um, it was, I was thankful for it. I shouldn't have been there in the first place. The vindication is to put a stop once and for all to what I know with Donald Trump was right. behind. There is no way that Enid Phoebus or Adam Pakula or uh, a guy named Patrick McFarlane, who's an RRM over at MDC. You'll see there's the remand order. There's no way that these three concocted this. This came right from the top. Um, and the only way to be vindicated is to make sure that they don't use this process On people like you, on other people who they deem to be critics, whether it's members of Congress, whether it's the media, whether it's Supreme Court judges, whether it's people like attorneys general, jurors, everybody, jurors, witnesses, no matter anyone that Donald Trump deems to be a critic, he will be able to use this. I said it on your on when we did that over a year ago that this is a test run. And now he knows exactly what he can get away with. And he has advanced this and he's already dictating and he's already projecting what he intends to do. If right. God forbid a million times he ends right. up becoming president. This is again. illustrative. That's why I wanted to use it, because it's specifically what happened to you. But your point is that, I don't know, they got lists. They're saying it. They go on TV and they say, we're going to go after media. We're going to go after critics. We're going to go after uh, the January 6th committee should be jailed. Alvin Bragg should be jailed. What is this about? You don't, this is not a country in which you go around and say people should be jailed. Of course they did, right? With Hillary Clinton. Lock her up. But yes, but they literally just say people should you know, be jailed. You know, I sit and I listen to a lot of the pundits. They talk, well, I think, well, in my opinion, there is no opinion here. There is no that I'm thinking about it. The documents speak for themselves. It is plain and simple that what he has done, he intends to do again. And he is telling you in advance yes. what he intends to do. You are not safe. Guys like Bezos or, or Elon Musk, they think that they are safe. No. 
Trump wants total power over the United States of America, including their wealth. He will do exactly what Mohammed bin Salman did when he jailed all of his relatives uh, at the Ritz uh, there in, um, in Riyadh. Donald will take their wealth. He will take their power. He will take everything. No member of Congress is safe. No one is safe because, again, the documents speak for themselves. Why do people not acknowledge that this happened to me? Mm -hmm. And if it happened to me, it will happen to you. Right, because you're full of Donald Trump secrets. You know, you know all the stuff. You're actually a dangerous guy for Donald Trump. Which is why they ended up doing this. Look, at the end of the day, he was right for trying to get me to do this. Look at what happened as a result of my 2019 testimony before the House Oversight Committee. That was one of seven. Look at what happened with the uh, New York Attorney General case with the civil, 500 million. Look at what's now happened with the Manhattan District Attorney case. He knew that I would be an issue to him. And so what did he decide to do? Lock them up. Yep. And that's exactly what they and, did. And but silence thank God. you. The more important thing than locking you up is it was actually an effort to silence well, you. Well, not more important is, to me. Locking I, you I, up. I understand. Really, I understand. It really terrible. Up is, is so as you can see, we're getting more and more evidence of Donald Trump's criminal danger. Right? In how he's fueling these dangerous anti-democratic conspiracy theories, which are are corrosive in and of themselves. But you might ask yourself, like, OK, but how is that criminal? Well, we saw what happened, right? It was these conspiracies about how supposedly us on the left were were trying to steal the election, even though there is no evidence of that. And Trump lost like 75, however many times in court. And many of his cronies tried cases independent of Trump, but sort of for Trump. And they all lost as well. Um, really demonstrating that. But it didn't stop there. It didn't stop with them taking stupid, but, you know, legal challenges to the system. It then went into the fake elector scheme and it went into the J6 coup attempt and it went into the perfect phone call made to Raffensperger. Many of these are, are leading to criminal charges against Trump, his cronies and, and other people as well. In not just Georgia and federally, but we've seen charges, not against Trump, but charges in like Arizona and Michigan against top Trump officials. And who knows, Trump may be charged there as well. But these are new evidence against Trump and how all of this is playing out from both Jamie Raskin and Michael Cohen. And also dangers about Donald Trump threats every day from the basement of Trump world, where all of these people that know Trump really well dig into the basement, the real gutter of Donald Trump's world, and they find more and more dirt.